Hallelujah. 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 We bless the name of the Lord. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Father, we bless your holy name. We thank you, we lift your name on high. You are the most high God. Ikabori Santali Gelebo Yegede. Masika Brosko Totoli Kakasha Kataraba. Mando Legede Gosson Toli Baraga Sheketeliaba. We worship you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. We lift up your name. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah unto your name. Hallelujah, he arose. Oh, yes. Oh yes, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Oh yes, oh yes. Hallelujah, he arose, the Prince of Peace arose. Hallelujah, he arose. Oh yes, oh yes. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I want to welcome everybody to this month of April. It's a very special month to me. That was the month I was born. And also the month that defines the victory of our existence as a Christian is a month that we celebrate the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to welcome you. If you can hear my voice today, the Lord has been good to you. He has saved you through this season of pandemic. And if you are on the sick bed, it's my prayer that after today's prayers, the Lord will look on you mercifully. And by his word, you will receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Before I proceed, I want to thank God for this opportunity, which I do not take lightly. In fact, I am a bit nervous. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want to thank the organizers of this program, uh, especially my brother, my friend, Pastor Kunle, for the opportunity accorded to me to anchor this uh, special program. We want to pray. And I'm so grateful. It gladdens my heart that young men that are very, very pragmatic, they are very restless for God. They are willing to use their resources to bless God. They are willing to use uh, their time, their talent to bless the name of God. Why some are smoking in their herbs and, and, being, and, and terrorizing people? We have a group of young men that are committed to raising the standard of God, even in our nations. We bless the name of the Lord for that. Thank you so much, everybody. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. The topic before me today is God and righteousness. I want to believe that my little brain cannot define God. It can never define who God is. And I'm sure that when we get to heaven, we are still going to see a lot of surprises, good ones, about God. Because the pages of the Bible we have, they are not enough to even talk about what Jesus did on earth. How much more what our God has done and what He is and who He is. So today we're just going to brush over it, but my focus will be on the fact that God is the author of righteousness. True righteousness comes from God. There is no man that can input righteousness to himself. God is the author of righteousness. I want to read a few passages that were given unto me and that will lay a foundation to us. And after that, we are going to pray. Prayer is more important. I'm reading Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6. Um, let's begin from um, verse 10. He said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wild of the devil. For we do not wrestle against the flesh and blood, 
but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having gathered your weights with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shewed your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fairy dust of the wicked one, and take the element of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayers and supplications in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And that's what we are doing now. And for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may be able to open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, Holy, acceptable to God, which is a reasonable service, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good, what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. Second Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any one is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, all things are of God. Can you mark that in your Bible? All things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation, that is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespass to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Praise the Lord. For time, I would like to stop there. And I have here to say that God is the author of, and finisher of our faith. And our faith in Christ brings righteousness from God by His mercies. I want to announce to you that because you form a ministry does not count you righteous. That you are the builder of the church that is the biggest or that you attend right now does not qualify you to be righteous. Righteousness is what we receive from God mercifully by His mercy. We do not get righteous by our own works. Although we have two types of righteousness, uh, according to the dictionary meaning, righteousness is defined as justice, justness, or divine holiness. The condition of being acceptable to God as made possible by that same God. Like I said, there are two kinds of righteousness. We have the righteousness before God. That is, the righteousness that defines, that, that smoothens our relationship with God. And that is called Koram Dio. And we have the self-righteousness of man that is in our relationship with our neighbors uh, and all things that God have created and that is called Kora Mundo. Today we know that the, the, the first righteousness we define is called God's righteousness and that kind of righteousness can only be measured by God. God is the one that can justify us. We cannot stand there and say, hey, because I have collar on my neck or my Bible is the biggest that that qualifies me. Or when my father gave birth to me, I was born inside the church. In fact, we go to church in the morning, we go in the afternoon, we go in the evening. That does not make you righteous. You can stay in church all the days of your life and you can still go to hellfire. Because when you trust in your own righteousness, the Bible says even our righteousness is like a filthy rag. The righteousness of God is that one that makes us to be justified before him. In fact, there's a place in the book of Psalms that by righteousness we have access even to the cause of praise of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, we have some Bible passages that I want us, don't mind me, I'm very, very organic. I still carry my Bible and I still read every page and I make all my church members to read their Bibles is very, 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 very important. We are going to read Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13. And what did he say? Hebrews 4, 13. Hallelujah. There's an important verse there that I want to bring out to us. He said, and there is no creation. There is no creation 
that is hidden from God's sight. But all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we have to give account. Another version of the Bible says, to him we have to do. That is, God is the one that has a measure of how good or bad we are. Sometimes we think we are doing good and we are actually doing wrong. Um, I was bobbing my hair in one of the uh, restaurants one time. Let me check my time. And um, while I was doing that, some young guys, they were talking about uh, uh, the white people bringing their religion to us and all those things. You know what I'm talking about. And he said, uh, all I just got to do is to do right. And at that point, I, I told my brother to hold on. I asked him, I said, what's the definition of right? Because when I was in Nigeria, if a police officer stop you and you stay in your car, uh, it's an offense, it's a disrespect. And if you come down to this part of the world in America and a police stops you and you get out, you might get shot. So there are some things in some places we, we notice that uh, adultery is not even a sin that if a friend comes to visit you, you can use your wife to, 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 as a gift or, if, or to pay that visitor or to, as, as um, something that you can use to welcome them. But in some other part, in most part of the world, is a, a bad thing to do. So if we say by human standard, we want to define righteousness, it's going to be in balance. Uh, places where you dare not raise your hand up in a place, there are some places you can t say some things. Uh, if my son tells me, hey, dad, be careful, it, it's not an offense to me in this part of the world. But in some other part of the world, it's abusive. So humanly speaking, we cannot even define what is right or what is wrong. But God has that measure. And that is why we need him. The Bible says, whom we have to do. We have to reckon. We have to give account to him. The account has to measure with his own book, with his own record of how he wants us to live his life. And hence, the need for righteousness. For us to live right, we need God to help us to justify us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then we have self-righteousness. This is most accessible to all men. This is most accessible to all men. People justify themselves by how quiet or how they feel that they, I don't beat people, I don't fight, and so I'm righteous. No, no, no. That cannot define righteousness. Um, uh, in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24, uh, I want us to read that Ephesians 4 24 uh, he made it known to us about some of the things we have to know about righteousness Ephesians 4 24 what did he say I read from here he said and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness you can see what he's saying here that according to God according to his measure that is what can give you true righteousness. And this place is defining when you have true something, that will be a false righteousness. And the false righteousness is our own self-righteousness. It tends to gratify itself. You will remember that poor man that stood before God and beat it and he could not even lift up his eyes and say, Father, have mercy upon me because I'm a sinner. Then we have another man that came and was boasting. I fast seven days. I do this. I do this. I'm not like that task collector. The Bible says the one with humble spirit, the one that depend on God, the one that feels that when I come before him every day, every time I need God went home justified. That justification is the imputation of righteousness. It is unfortunate that many brethren today, they have lived to think that their own righteousness can save them. They have lived to, to think that they themselves can be uh, by our own acts, the way you talk, the way you pray, your prayer, you think that's what's going to grow. No, 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 no. That's not the point. Proverbs 30, 12. It says, there is this generation that seemed righteous in their own eyes, but their sins have not been washed away. That sin, that thing that makes you think you are righteous is self-righteousness and it cannot justify us anywhere. My time will not even allow me to do so much justice to this. It is the Spirit of God in us that connects us to God that makes us to be righteous. We cannot generate it. 
our good heart, the way you cover your head, the way you, uh, even me wearing color does not make me righteous. There's a time that you have to seek the face of God. You have to come down and say, I depend on you for my daily living. Just like we need the breath of God physically to live, we need the breath of God spiritually to live. And that is him justifying us by his help to make us live right every day. To make us live according to his tenancy, according to his will, according to what he wants us to do. I don't know, maybe you belong to that category of people who feels that um, you are righteous in your own sight uh, because I've not killed anybody or because I've not, uh, you know, when the Bible was, Jesus was even defining that. Those of us men, even if we look at a woman uh, lustfully, we have, we have had sexual intercourse with that person. It makes us to know that uh, if we live in the flesh, we are going to die. The Bible says the spirit is the one that profits, but the flesh has nothing to offer. The flesh is self-justification. It's what makes us to feed. Then you enter into his church and believe that you are the best. Nobody can pray. I, I once, when I was in school, I prayed with one brother from another denomination. As you can see, I'm an Anglican priest. I, I, I grew up as an Anglican. And so it belongs to Pentecostal church. And we prayed together. And do you know, after, after I prayed, that brother started praying again. for what? So believing that maybe I'm a sinner, my prayer may not be answered, he needs to pray. Hallelujah. God will help us in the name of Jesus. The essence of today's prayer, we are going to pray for our pastors, we are going to pray for our leaders, we are going to come humble before him and seek the face of God. And seek the face of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in the book of Daniel 11.32, And as such that do wickedly against covenant shall he corrupt by flatness. But the people that know their God, they shall be strong and do exploit. Knowing God is depending on him. Knowing him is looking up to him and say, I cannot do without you. I cannot do without you. I cannot do without you. Oh Lord, I cannot do without you. I cannot do without you. I cannot do without you. Oh God, I told my church members that when a patient goes to the hospital, he will lay down. Even if that doctor is younger than your youngest son, he will say, lie down. You will have to lie down before you are examined. And the Bible says, I beseech thee, brethren, that you present yourself humbly. If he tells you to remove your clothes, you will humbly remove it. That's you submitting yourself to a doctor to analyze your body. Even those of us as Christians, we need to lay down, strip ourselves naked so that God can examine us, so that he can make us and search us and purify us and take away impurities from us so that we can be a true child of God that lives under the righteousness through faith in Jesus Christ with what Jesus Christ has offered unto us. So we are going to pray our first prayer and I want you to pray very well. We have a few minutes for these prayers, probably uh, in the next 11 minutes, we are going to pray. Hallelujah. We are going to pray to God. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, please draw me closer to you. Have mercy on me. As that man prayed, the Bible said he could not even lift up his eyes. He, he said, God, have mercy. And I'm not saying that as a son of God, we should live a life of timidity. Brethren, I have confidence in Christ that he has saved me. But when it comes to the presence of God, my boldness is to ascertain to the devil that I'm a child of God and not to be proud to God. I don't know if you understand that. When I come before God, my pride, my glory is in Christ so that the devil can know that I belong to Christ. And not that I'm proud to God to say, Lord, I am righteous now. So where is that thing you promised me? We always need mercy. We always need God to, to, to touch us and begin to change our life. So I want you to pray and say, Father, you see, when, when somebody beckons to you, he said, draw nearer to God and we draw nearer to you. I want us to pray that by the mercy of God, Father, draw me closer to you. I want to know you more. Reveal yourself to me. The Bible said, they that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploit. As a Christian, do you want to do exploit? I want you to pray to God. Father, help me, oh God. Help me have mercy upon me. Wash me clean, oh God. I don't want to die in my self-righteousness. 
ma rukre teri bursa ma yagara baraba ma rubra sekete legedebo yekete riba baba baba baga ya rubra sekete rubra sekete ligada gaya gada ba in Jesus name we have prayed. Proverbs twenty four ten says, if you faint in the days of adversity, your strength is small. Of course, our strength will always be small. Our strength will always be small. That means if you go to battle with your own strength, which is small, meager, you will fail. I read in the Bible recently how God scaled down thousands of people to 300 so that I can, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> so that I can go to war with them. And while that small number, even those small numbers, they did not even lift up their hands to fight. God fought the battle for them. He says, so that nobody will come and say, by my strength, I have won that battle. Many of us have lost battles in our lives, in our family, in our businesses, because we went there with our wit, with our knowledge, and with, our, with everything that we have. But that is not in Christ. So he's saying, if you fail in the time of problem, adversity, that means you went there with your little strength. But want to depend upon the strength of God. I want you to say to God, Father, I confess that my strength is weak. I confess that I have nothing in me. Lord, I put you on. I covet your strength, oh Lord. Strengthen me by your divine power. Strengthen me. God, help me, oh God. Help me by your divine strength. Help me by your divine strength. Help me by your divine strength, oh God. In the name of Jesus. I wait upon you, oh God. I shall be strong in the name of Jesus Christ. I need the strength of heaven. The food that the raven gave to, to that prophet by God took him on a journey of 40 days. That is the strength we need. God Almighty, feed me with your divine food so that I'll be able to mantle with winds as eagle, so that I'll be able to walk through the challenges of this life as a Christian in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. John 16, 33, he said, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. In Jesus Christ, there is peace. And peace does not mean absence of trouble. It means walking through those tribulations with assurance of hope. We don't want to be deceived by the so-called news that some Christianity, some Christians are carrying around that when you give your life to Christ, problems will be over. Of course, problems will be over because the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous because the Lord delivered them from But we don't have to overlook the fact that there will be many afflictions for the righteous. So that when they give their life to Christ and things start happening, they say, wow, what's going on? This is not the kind of Christianity. You, the Bible is saying it here, John 16, 33, I have told you that in Jesus Christ you have peace, but in the world you will have trouble. Tribulations will be your portion. He said, but take courage, I have overcome the world. I want us to pray. Father, I step into your peace. I covet your peace in the name of Jesus. Lord, whatever I'm going through in my church, in my family, in my place of work, generally concerning my health, I step into your peace because I know the thought you have towards me. That the thought of peace are not of evil to bring me to an expected end. Father, I believe that since I've given my life to you, since I've laid my life on the altar of your of your surgery, that you will come out and make me to a man successful in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Every tribulation, I overcome them, O God, by the victory you have fought for me. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. We are going to pray for our nations. Our nations, we are going to use Nigeria as a point of contact for the African countries and we're going to use America as a point of contact for the Europeans and the, the Western world. The Bible says in Proverbs 14, 34, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any person. When the righteous rule, the city will be happy. We can see what is going on. We have seen videos of children being killed innocently, people being kidnapped. It's because there is no righteousness in the land. When there is righteousness, the, the, the people will begin to, to enjoy the peace of God. We are going to pray for our spiritual leaders. We are going to pray for our church leaders. I had the news of a pastor at the time with a very large congregation. He brought a gun and killed his wife. A pastor. A pastor. 
please let's pray for our religious leaders let's pray for the geos let's pray for for the for the founders let's pray for the bishops let's pray for all the leaders archbishop whatever they are called that the righteousness of god will take over their life that the righteousness of jehovah will take over their life let's pray for our leaders spiritual leaders our political leaders let's pray for the president of nigeria those people who are lawmakers our governors our commissioners our ministers let us pray that the lord almighty will take over their heart we pray oh god that you will humble them that lord god you will humble them they will listen to your voice they will listen to your voice they will obey your voice they will obey your voice in the name of jesus they will come bowing before you in the name of jesus we pray especially for nigeria that father you will take hold of the heart of the people they will begin to love righteousness they will begin to serve you father in our homes oh god we pray for righteousness in the life of the parents that they'll be able to tutor their children in the way of the lord in the name of jesus father put your word in their heart in the name of jesus let there be revival in the land let there be healings in our land in the name of jesus christ let the blood of jesus speak for us the bible said the blood of Abel speak for vengeance oh god we pray that the blood of the innocent oh god lord god your blood will speak peace into the land and begin to take control in the name of jesus christ in jesus name we have prayed we are going to pray that every enterprise, the weapon that these people are fashioning against the innocent people, that the Lord will not allow them. Every source of their sponsor will be disconnected. Every source of their help will be disconnected. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray against every terrorism. We pray against all this kidnapping. We pray, oh God Almighty, that Lord God, their source of supply, Lord, will be disconnected. You will dry it up, oh God. You will dry it up, oh God. You will dry it up, oh God. The hands that sustain them will dry off. In the name of Jesus, it will dry off. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, we have prayed. We are going to pray for the people generally. We are going to pray because the Bible says in 2 Chronicles 7 14, it says, If the people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, that praying and seeking the face of God is seeking for the righteousness of God to do things right. In our government, our teachers, some people say our government, our leaders, but when you go to schools, come on to collect your transcript. A typewriter woman will hold it if you don't pay bribe. They think it's only police. The thing has eaten deep into every sector, even the church. There are some ministers that will not even minister if you do not give them honorarium. It's good to collect honor, to give, to honor the men of God. But some have hoarded. They care about the word of God because they are not be They only go to churches that can pay them well. Brethren, we need to humble ourselves. For God to arise on our behalf as men of God, as Christians, we need to humble ourselves. We need to seek the face of God. We need to pray to God. The Bible says, if they can seek my face and, and, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive them their sins and I will heal the land. Let us pray that men will seek the face of God. Father, we pray that the spirit of humility, the spirit to seek the face of humility is not being gentle. Just walk quietly the way you dress as brothers, you do like this. But the thing inside of you is wicked. Humility is the total dependence on God. Is when you depend on God. Father, we pray, oh God, that you cause men to humble themselves and seek, their, seek your face. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. I want us to pray. Finally, uh, I read the story of Jehu in the book of 2 Kings chapter 9. If you have time, you can read it. There's an interesting thing that I want us to pray for ourselves. The Bible says Jehu was separated from his colleague. Commanders was separated from and he was anointed and he became a king. Can you pray that, Father, by your anointing, you will separate me among my neighbors and set me on the throne? The Bible says when the anointing was confirmed, his mates, they laid their clothes on the ground and they began to sing praises of him being a king. We are going to pray that, Father, every spirit of lack of success, anything that makes me to go backward, spiritually and physically, financially, does not make me to advance. Father, by your anointing, you will take me out from Mary Clay. You will take me out from my family and set me apart for glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you have answered. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Once again, I want to thank you for the time you have listened. My name is Reverend Colonel Felicia Kolawale. I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and cause you to prosper in all your ways according to his will. In the name of Jesus. Until when I come your way, remain blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.